What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is Lazy Days Tubby and I'm back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today. And I am doing some more early Muslim expansion by kings in general. And it is the Muslim conquest of Egypt 640. I'm really looking forward to finding out what kings in general have in store for me today. They make some amazing content. So if you haven't already, head over to their page. The link's in the description box down below. If you guys are enjoying my reaction, looking forward to more content from me, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. But we are just going to jump straight into this one. Egypt was the wealthiest, most productive and coveted land in all the ancient world and thus the target of many invasions. Mm -hmm. yeah. From the Assyrians to the Achaemenid Persians of Cyrus, followed by Alexander the Great and finally the Romans, Egypt changed hands multiple times, serving as a prestigious jewel in the crown which filled the treasuries mm. of occupying peoples and empires. The Muslim Caliphate was no different in this regard. Welcome to our video covering the Muslim campaign in Byzantine Egypt and the battles of Babylon and Heliopolis. Okay. The sponsor of today's video is Lucy, a cleaner, better tasting nicotine alternative on a mission. Heads up, all of Syria and Iraq for addictive chemical. Despite winning all of Syria and Iraq for Islam in a series of stunning victories, the Caliphate's military situation remained unstable. Fierce Persian resistance continued in the mountains to the northeast while Emperor Heraclius was hindering the Muslim advance as much as he could. To stall for time, while he created an impenetrable dead zone between the Anatolian plain and enemy-occupied Syria, right. Heraclius right. sent envoys to his Christian Arab allies in the Jazeera area, requesting that they attack the Muslim army in Syria. Mm. They obeyed the Emperor's orders, okay. crossing the Euphrates and arriving outside Emesa in March 638 where Abu Ubaidah had concentrated his forces to meet them. However, Umar, in his typically hands-on fashion, reacted to this news by sending orders to Sa'd in Persia for three columns to invade Jazeera from Iraq. When this group of Count Muslim measures. warriors Good launched their attack and began plundering, the Christian back. Arabs retreated. Yeah. In the aftermath, Forces under Saad turned and annexed Jazeera completely. Mm. At the same time, multiple mounted raiding parties were sent by Abu Ubaidah into Roman lands. Khalid, the commander of one of these contingents, captured Marash in autumn 638 and hauled vast quantities of loot back to his base wow. at Kinnisrin. However, Whoa, Khalid wasn't really a man a accustomed to hoarding wealth routinely distributing his personal share of battle spoils to others. Mm. On one... Mm. Good. One occasion, after his raid on Heraclius' lands, an Arab chief and excellent poet, Ashes bin Qais, recited a beautiful piece for Khalid, and in return was given 10,000 dirhams. Wow. Unknown to the poet's benefactor, this act of generosity was in fact to herald the end of his peerless military career. Oh. Caliph Umar had okay. been concerned about Khalid for years by 638, specifically that his personal brilliance and constant victories were enticing the Muslims to worship him rather than God. So when Umar received reports of his general's extravagance, Umar used it as an excuse to dismiss the Sword of Islam from his post and bring him to Medina. Okay. When the two formidable men came face to face, the Caliph spoke the words, You have done, and no man has done as you have done. But it is not people who do, it is Allah who does. Uh... After this, Khalid left Arabia for Calchas, where he lived just four more unhappy, unremarkable years before finally passing away no in way. 642. No way. What do you mean unhappily? Just because you, yeah, I guess a man like that, just someone like that can't really sit there and do nothing and be happy. It's a shame. As the undefeated victor of hundreds of clashes leaves our story, another bold but historically unappreciated Arab general enters the limelight. Okay. That was the 48-year-old Amr ibn Alas, 
who won distinction during the battles at Ajnadain, Yarmouk, and many others. Mm. When Abu Ubaidah appointed the conquered regions to his subordinates, Amr received all of Palestine. Upon moving into the area, he forced the surrender of Gaza and several other Roman garrisons which had remained unconquered after the fall of Jerusalem. Yeah. In early 639, plague spread rapidly throughout the Levant. The Arabs, unaccustomed to this kind of terrible disease because of their nomadic lifestyle, died in the thousands, including generals Yazid, Shurabil, and Abu Abeda himself. It is worth noting that upon Yazid's... So they lost Khalid and then three other generals. So their main generals have all sort of passed during this period of time. That's... For any other like sort of empire, you would have thought that would have uh, caused some disruption. But obviously, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Death, his younger brother Muawiyah, was appointed as governor in his place. Amr, who survived, was given command of the army. And this gave him a golden opportunity to propose an idea to the caliph. Having visited Alexandria multiple times earlier in his life, Amr was well aware of just how prosperous the Nile region was mm. and believed it would be easy to conquer. The new commander put forward his plan to seize Roman Egypt for Islam, confidently declaring to the caliph, it is the richest of lands and the weakest in defending itself. Mm. Although Umar, who wished to consolidate Muslim gains after years of incessant warfare and plague, was initially reluctant, believing Amr was underestimating the task. His eloquence and persistence eventually led the caliph to relent. Okay. Restricted was... to just 4,000 troops, right. mainly cavalry, Amr set force from Jabia that same night in total it's secrecy, under the condition that he would withdraw if instructions to turn back reached him before he crossed into Egypt. However, if Amr's army was already inside Egypt when these instructions arrived, it could keep going. Okay. Convinced almost immediately that this expedition was too risky, Umar sent a camel rider off to Amr, carrying a sealed letter ordering him to pull back. When it reached the general at Rafa, just a few miles from Egypt, Amr understood that the letter would doom his expedition before mm. it even began. So Amr left the message unopened and moved into Egypt and only then opened the letter. And since the <laughs> army was already in Egypt when Umar's orders were revealed, Amr reasoned that it could keep going. Mm. The timeless province of power and riches was incredibly vulnerable, weakened by years of military laxity and alienated from the imperial authorities in Constantinople Okay. by long-standing cultural and religious differences. Mm -hmm. The primary factor was that the Copts, Egypt's native population, adhered to a different form of Christianity to the empire at large. Okay. Emperor Heraclius in particular persecuted any perceived heretic in a manner that made religious division inevitable. Mm. The Roman authorities in Alexandria were alerted to Amr's presence responding by raising troops and sending some of them to reinforce Pelusium, the key to Egypt. Setting forth from Arish in late December 639, the Caliphate's small army of veterans soon reached Pelusium, besieging it by land. However, Roman naval superiority meant that the city garrison could be reinforced and yep. supplied, and this led mm -hmm. to a two-month-long siege, which was only brought to a conclusion when the Muslims repulsed a sortie and stormed the city in mid-February oh, 640. They did, do it. they did storm the city in the end. After taking Pelusium, to the alarm and astonishment of the government in Alexandria, Amr marched unopposed along the Nile Delta's eastern fringe until he reached the citadel of Bilbaeus. The defenders resisted under blockade for a month, giving the Romans time to shift their forces around. Right. Aware that the marauding 4,000 Arabs were aiming for the Memphis area, Egypt's prefect and patriarch of Alexandria, Cyrus, marched a 20,000 strong 20, army to reinforce four. the nearby fortress called Babylon. 
commanded by Augustalis Theodorus and garrisoned by 5,000 soldiers, mm -hmm. Babylon was one of the Nile's strongest defensive bastions, standing 60 feet high in places and possessing walls up to 6 feet thick. By the time Amur starved the Bilbaeus defenders into surrender in the spring of 640, the Romans were prepared for his inevitable assault. Mm -hmm. Bypassing Heliopolis on their left, the Muslims do? arrived outside Babylon in May. Due to its sheer size, only some of Theodorus's army were manning the battlements, while most were encamped outside of the northern wall of the fortress, protected by a deep, arcing ditch. Mm. Fortifying this secondary position even further were spikes in front, and undug sections around the perimeter to act as sally points. See, I see. Shortly after arriving and witnessing the Roman strength arrayed inside Babylon, Amur launched his 4,000 against the Roman units directly in front of the trench. After a hard-fought skirmish, the Muslims were repulsed with relative ease yeah. and set about finally making camp. Right. Observing that his plan to keep Theodorus on the defensive was paying off, Amur mounted daily mm. raids against the Roman positions all along the ditch. Furthermore, in an attempt to conceal just how tiny his forces were, the Muslim commander split and spread it over a large area. This state of affairs lasted for two months, the Muslims constantly assailing the Roman positions, and the Romans remaining hunkered down mm. behind the ditch, presumably believing they would be able to win without fighting. By July, no opportunity to gain a decisive victory had shown itself to Amr, and his men were slowly tiring. So, having put the eventuality to the back of his mind, the man who had proclaimed that taking Egypt would be simple okay, so wrote to the caliph asking for reinforcements. Mm. Rather than chiding his overly optimistic general, Umar mustered and sent him 4,000 reinforcements mm. to conclude the campaign, who reached Amr a few weeks later. Okay. With these new forces, the Muslim attacks on Babylon were renewed with even greater force, killing large numbers of Roman soldiers, mm. but failing to break the bastion's resistance. Even more hesitantly than the first time, Amr sent another request for Umar's aid. This time, Risky. a further 4,000 troops were dispatched under the leadership of Zubayr bin al-Awam, who, despite being offered Amr's command by the irritated caliph, merely stated that he wished to help the Muslims engaged in Egypt. Okay. These new troops arrived in late September. After conducting a personal reconnaissance mission around the area, Zubayr pointed out something to Amr which the general seems to have missed. Still present about 10 miles behind the Muslim army was the Roman garrison city of Heliopolis. If coordinated correctly, these troops could smash into the Muslims yeah. from behind if Theodorus launched any attack from Babylon. To remove this potential threat, Amr led a large portion of his 12,000 soldiers to Heliopolis, leaving just enough at the fortress to keep the Romans on their toes. Upon approaching the walls, however, some of the garrison's cavalry contingent emerged from the city and beat some of Amr's horsemen in a brief engagement. Oh no! Nevertheless, they were forced to pull back inside the walls as yeah. the city was besieged. Only a short time after investing Heliopolis, Zubayr and a small unit of hand-picked warriors scaled the walls in a... Seeing this, and realizing that the result of the clash was inevitable anyway, Heliopolis's garrison sued for peace and paid the jizya. I can't believe that they scaled the, the walls. Seeing this, it. and realizing that the result of the clash was inevitable anyway, Heliopolis's garrison sued for peace and paid the jizya, after which Amr and Zubayr returned to Babylon. Mm. In their absence, the Romans had driven away the Muslim detachments closest to the trench and re-established their positions beyond it. Theodorus, likely realizing that he wasn't going to have the luxury of simply waiting the invaders out, began employing the Muslims' own tactics against them, 
launching daily raids through the Roman okay, bridges. Okay. Although the Romans generally lost more men in these scattered engagements, they could afford to, while Amma could not. The stalemate went on relatively unchanged until a revered Arab officer, Karija bin Huzafa, approached Amma with a risky but potentially decisive plan to win the battle. Okay. What is this that plan? night, Karija was given a cavalry regiment and ordered to lay his trap, which he did by riding around to the southern spur of a featureless ridge on the eastern side of the field. After quietly taking up a concealed position relatively close to the Romans' ditch, the Muslim cavalry waited. As Huzafa suspected, when morning came, the Roman forces crossed the trench in force see, and I deployed see. for battle. The Muslims arrayed opposite them. When both sides were ready, Theodorus launched his attack across the front, pushing Amma, who ordered his army to retreat from Babylon with suspicious ease. Mm. It was in reality a feigned retreat. Mm. When the melee had moved far beyond Babylon's defensive trench, Carriger's mounted contingent galloped out from their hiding place behind the ridge and occupied the crossing areas which Theodorus would have to use for any retreat. Uh. Amma, seeing that his horsemen were in place, countercharged with immense ferocity, driving mm. the Romans back towards their own fortifications. Hearing the given signal, Carriger also launched his assault, crashing straight into Theodorus's rear, hemming the Romans in and then encircling them. That's it. Many defenders were killed, but wow. a few Roman units turned and burst through Huzafa's cavalry, managing to re-secure the crossing points. The remnants of the Roman army at Babylon retreated across the trench, pursued closely by Amma's forces, who continued mm. their attack up to the very walls of the fortress. Fighting continued in the space between the ditch and the citadel proper, until the gate was closed from inside. Those who got in were the lucky ones, as not a single Roman soldier remained alive on the field of battle. The morale of Cyrus, who was not a military man by profession, and the Roman soldiery as a whole, was completely shaken by this stark defeat. Wow. And to the prefect, it was clear that peace had to be concluded. Mm. To make matters even more dire, Amur somehow got his hands on a few catapults and used them to launch deadly oh, boulders, softening up the defenses. When this began happening, Cyrus departed Babylon with a small escort and took up residence on the mid-river island of Rauda, from which the fortress was being resupplied. Then the Coptic prefect dejectedly sent word to the Muslims that he wished to treat with them. Interesting. Envoys were exchanged back and forth between the two sides, and Heraclius's viceroy attempted to offer Amma a lavish bribe if the Muslims left Egypt, but the Arab commander responded by giving three options, conversion to Islam, payment of the jizya, or death. Mm. Cyrus favoured capitulating in some form, but his Egyptian colleagues wouldn't have any of it, so the stalemate continued outside the impenetrable fortress. Since coming to terms with Cyrus was impossible, Amma went into Babylon with a few companions in order to speak with Theodorus. However, when he was entering the fortress, a Roman soldier muttered to him scornfully, You have entered. Now see how you get out. Oh. Correctly believing orders had been given for him to be killed upon exiting the conference, Amma tricked his way out of the fortress convincing Theodorus that he was going to bring even more of his generals unwittingly into the trap. Mm. These attempts at ending the siege failed, and the gridlock outside Babylon continued. But finally, in mid-December, the observant Zubeya noticed that, since most of the fighting had taken place on Babylon's north side, the riverside Gate of Iron and its two guard towers were relatively undefended. Okay. Just like that, the Muslims had found a nice. key to Theodorus's citadel. Swiftly putting his infiltration plan into action with Amma's blessing, Zubeya assembled a unit to conduct the operation. On the moonless, clear night of December 20th, 640, 
most of the Muslim army arrayed quietly outside the Gate of Iron, while Zubayr and his comrades climbed ladders up the wall. Mm. Then, when some of his men were gathered on top, a deafening Islamic battle cry was sounded, echoed by the entire army, causing shock and panic amongst defenders who had no idea what was happening. Okay. Amidst the chaos, it, Zubayr slew the gatehouse open. sentries and broke the chain which held the gate closed, mm. allowing Amr and the Muslim army to flood inside. While some of the more elite Roman formations made a brave last stand, most of their comrades routed towards the Nile. Once they reached the riverbank, the soldiers crossed to the safety of Rauda on pre-prepared boats, which ferried yeah, soldiers it. back and forth throughout the night. Among those who fled was Theodorus, who managed to escape Amma's grasp and run back to Alexandria. Mm. The next day, Cyrus sued for and obtained peace for the Copts on Muslim terms, agreeing to pay the jizya and submit the entire country to Islamic rule. Oh, the wow. Romans in Egypt could either accept and remain, or reject and depart. Unsurprisingly, when Heraclius received a letter from Cyrus seeking the imperial stamp of approval for his peace with Amr, the emperor was furious and categorically refused, he would. responding with a message full of scorn and insults. To ensure that an active defense of Egypt continued despite the prefect's treachery, Heraclius had other messages ordering firm resistance delivered to mm. all of his Roman generals in Egypt, who obeyed their sovereign without question. Cyrus, disavowed by the Romans, put himself and the Copts under Amr's command, okay. promising the Muslims administrative and engineering assistance. Okay. Memphis was now secure, and the push towards Alexandria could begin. Mm. Our series on the early Muslim expansion will continue soon, so make sure you- I really, really enjoyed that episode. I, I am definitely looking forward to finding out what happens uh, from here on outwards. I'm really interested to see what happens with the Roman generals that are left there. Are they going to be causing any more problems within the sort of uh, Egyptian area for the Muslim Empire? And in general, what else we have to come? Are they going to get to Alexandria? We only have a few castles that we've taken so far. So definitely more to come. If you guys are enjoying my reaction, looking forward to seeing more, then like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. But we will...